Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski Doo. What matters is what's next. Yamaha Conquer Snow. And by FXR Racing Full Throttle Addiction. Anybody who's watched Snow Tracks for even a short period of time will, will recognize our end of the year award we call Snow Tracks' real world sled of the year. And what it is, is essentially after an entire season's worth of us riding the sleds that we have in our fleet, talking about them and battling back and forth about what's good and what's not about each one, we narrow it down and we pick the sled that we think provides the best overall riding experience for the widest range of riders. And of course, it's all within the framework of what we have on the ground. So we try to have a very wide range of popular models, latest and greatest, of course, but we don't just use those snowmobiles for this competition. We use those snowmobiles every day of the winter. Every day that we can ride, these sleds are used. We have opinions from a wide range of riders who have different ways and styles that they ride and expectations and also their prejudices. And so we, we try to weed that out by using a wide range of snowmobiles. We sit down and we look at the things that made a sled feel great and then we also look at things that were quantitatively good about a snowmobile. So you've got suspension travel, you've got fuel economy, you know, you've got those types of things. And then you've got overall rider experience and things that are sort of more qualitative. I think that that's an important way to do it because that is the overall riding experience. We narrow it down over the course of the, of the whole winter to a few that really stood out and everybody's been talking about. And then we use 18 different categories to quantify which one of those was truly the best one of all. And I think the proof of the pudding is the diversity of the winners over the, over the course of history. I mean, we don't always give the win to the biggest turbocharged motor. A lot of times, uh, like uh, a few years back, we gave it to the new, uh, the Altigra 6000 with the new uh, dual stage injection engine. We also gave it to a GSX one year and a GTX from Skidoo years before that. But then just to make what I said all seem really silly, last year we gave it to the biggest and the greatest. We gave it to the 850 Ski-Doo. Historically, we put on no less than 20,000 miles on our fleet combined in a season, and this year was no different. And it was really kind of a cool, diverse fleet this year, I think, of the sleds that we chose. We had everything from uh, the Backcountry X, Switchback Assault. We had a GTX Grand Touring, a Sidewinder and a Viper. We had the Switchback XCR. And I think one of the sleds this year, and I think it was because it was new and it was something different, and we thought, let's give this a shot. And everybody just loved it, was the Titan. Thought to myself, okay, I see where this can be useful. And I see what will probably be a camera guy sled. And, and yet this season, that's a sled that everybody wanted to ride all the time, especially on those crazy cold days. We had lineups for guys booking that sled on weekends to take it and, uh, and use it for all manner of stuff. I mean, you can tow a house with it. The crazy part about that sled was it was totally credible as a trail sled. And another dark horse that came to us as a limited build was the uh, Articat ZR8000 with the new DSi motor. It might not be the biggest and the baddest, but it really, really rocked and made great impressions across the board with everybody around here. And then of course, from Skidoo, you've got your, you know, your Renegade XRS, which was a new model, but one that really to me stood out and, and performed well above what I anticipated it would. The Sidewinder we, we've got this year is just really an impressive snowmobile. And I mean, when you have to roll your hands back around the hand grips to hang on when you hit the throttle, you know you're hanging on to something pretty potent. But it's just so trailable and it was very popular. A lot of guys really liked it and that was a bit of a standout. So now comes the most important point in this whole story where we announce the four sleds that we think uh, most embody the true spirit of Snowtrax's real world sled of the year. Here we go, drum roll please. The Polaris Switchback XCR 800. The Skidoo XRS Renegade 850. The Arctic Cat ZR8000 137. And the Yamaha Viper LTX LE 50th Anniversary Edition. Now let's take a look at what each of these sleds has and lacks that we think made them contenders for this year's competition. So the first sled on our list is the Polaris XCR Switchback 800. And this is a sled that to me is kind of amusing in how similar our scores were. The only thing that we actually differed in was rear ride 
And I think that's for a very good reason. Yeah, it relates to the fact that I don't ditch bang like you do, and uh, I'm a little bit older than you. I really appreciate a plush ride. The Pro S back end, to me, is the, is the best setup for Pro XC suspension. And uh, I just found that the XCR in the back was, was a little bit unrepentant. However, we both agreed strongly on handling. Absolutely, that is one that nobody disagrees on when they ride this sled. And front end ride is another one that everybody gives huge marks to for that chassis. Things that you don't get great marks for are fit and finish. They're not up to par with what else is out there. Um, fuel economy, they're not an E-Tech, you know, that's that's kind of where they tend to suffer. And the important thing about all that is, is that the rider experience scores, the thing slayed those scores. Yep. Next up is the Skidoo Renegade XRS 850. And this sled occupies a lot of space in the hearts and minds of the Snowtracks test team here. This is a very impressive snowmobile and scored very high marks in a lot of categories. One of the things that was pretty interesting though, was that it scored even lower than we might have expected in a couple of key categories. The big one for me was rider ergonomics. That was one that really jumped out at me and it only became obvious when you were jumping from one sled to the next to the next on the same day is that when you got on that sled, it just didn't feel perfect. Just really far forward. And it's the most different sled ergonomically than all other snowmobiles. We, we knew that. The other thing, a lot of our testers weren't overly impressed with the front end handling. They're nervous. They're just nervous handling snowmobiles. They always have been, um, and they're just not as predictable. They're not as relaxing to ride. You really have to ride that sled and be on your game. Now, there were a couple categories where it slayed in, though. And of course, our motion. What are you gonna say? And in fact, you know what? It's not even worth talking about anymore. It's the best. Our motion is the best rear suspension ride in the biz, and the score showed it. Definitely. And I think the other big one, not surprising, is that motor. I mean, basically any category related to power, fuel economy, efficiency, whatever, it just nails all of those. Now let's talk about Articat's ZR8000 137. I think this nominee is really all about the motor. We were really waiting a long time for that new engine to show up. The motor is a winner. The motor is superb. There's really nothing that I can say in my impressions of, of, of that vehicle's performance negative about that engine. It's fast, it's revvy, it's good on fuel, it's good on oil. Everything that was good about the Suzuki and everything that was bad about the Suzuki fixed. The things about that sled that I think stood out as being in need of improvement was maybe ride quality. And I think all that relates to is the shock package. We have had experience with that same sled with QS3s on it, and that's a big improvement, but the vehicle in this competition didn't have QS3s. So we have to rate it fairly from that perspective. And it just, just didn't provide that super plush ride that we want. I think uh, one of the things you can pat Arctic on the back for on this is, is the move to way better quality fit and finish. I mean, the new body work, it goes on and off easily and it looks nice. It, it just looks a lot better. I think buyers are much more satisfied than the way this stuff used to fit. We all agreed this sled handles really, really well. We agreed that it's decently comfortable ergonomically. It's actually pretty good, not perfect, but pretty good. Definitely a sled that we all enjoyed riding. Next up is the Yamaha Viper LTX 50th Anniversary Edition. And okay, we completely realize that most of our viewers are gonna be saying, what, not the Sidewinder? The Sidewinder is a very expensive snowmobile. And to make this a more even, believable, real world comparison, we would stand back from that and go with the Viper because the Viper is in the mainstream with the rest of these sleds in terms of an MSRP. You know, the, the Viper, this is the best Viper we've ever had, like hands down. And the one category to me that stood out the most was the suspension adjustability and the ride. It really did ride good with those awesome Kashima coated QS3s. Most people would not believe it. You have to ride it to experience it. It really does improve that sled and it adds tremendous to that bottom line. Again, the whole rider experience, people would get off that sled and say, wow, I had no idea. What are you gonna say about the 1049? We've called it the best four stroke engine in the business and there's been a lot of new four strokes come along since that motor was launched. That motor still continues to impress with torque, high RPM power and fuel economy. And durability. I and mean, that's one of the benchmarks of BM Haas sled is that this thing's gonna run forever and you can put a million miles on it and you really can. And I think the big one for me that I complain about all the time, and I'm not gonna stop until it's fixed, is handling. I think that that's a good handling chassis and it has great potential. But when you put those skis on, they just don't work. 
Snow Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Now comes the real hard part of this competition, and that's taking these four fantastic snowmobiles and eliminating three of them to get to the winner. And that's a hard thing to do. You gotta start with number four, and it's a sled that I actually really like, but the Yamaha does get eliminated first. The reason that it, it got there, the points showed this. Everybody's points added up. Big one that stood out was the handling. That's where it really lost a lot of points. It got hurt there. I mean, handling is, is one of the, the top, most important things about a sled, and this one could use some improvement. Okay, so we've got to do this again now, the third place sled, and that is the ZR8000 Arctic Cat with the new DSi motor in it. In our opinion, the ergonomics of the sled, the seat in particular, is not right. They've done a, a sort of fix on it, but it needs to be uh, taller to be more comfortable. The switch gear is really outdated and it needs some work there. And suspension adjustability, which contributes to that bottom line that's so important about the overall rider experience. And luckily for that sled, these are things that next year could be completely different and probably will be. So who knows where this one's gonna end up. But for this competition, it ends up third. Between these top two sleds, there are a lot of similarities and there are a lot of differences. And I think it's really interesting because in the similarity department, a lot of that stuff is the subjective stuff, is the stuff that you ride it and you just love it and you feel it and you got great things to say. But in the scores, they, they're actually pretty opposites. You know, when it comes to ride quality, the Polaris gets tens for front end ride quality, but gets lower marks for rear. The Skidoo gets exactly opposite. It gets tens for rear ride quality, but it gets low marks in the front. Skidoo snowmobiles are built with fit and finish quality, NVH, all of those things that are so quantitative to the buyer at a level that's beyond everything else. The Polaris is doing better, but it's not world-class in the in the same way the Skidoo is. Yeah, I mean, you got a Skidoo that's like a BMW and you got a Polaris that's kind of like a like a Chevy. You know, it's not terrible, but it's not perfect. And you then you've got this other sled that you can't fault anything on it. On the other hand, you've got this Polaris that everybody agrees fits perfectly. When you sit on it, the handlebars are where you think they should be. The seat feels super comfortable. So here we go, we got pluses and minuses on both sides in major categories. The little categories, they're pretty even in all of the other stuff, off-trail, on-trail versatility, you know, things that are more general. So which one of these two sleds is the winner? So the Polaris XCR 800 Switchback wins the Snow Tracks Real World Sled of the Year competition. Here's what we believe is the reason that sets this sled apart for this 2018 model year. It's the last thing we mark on our charts when all of us participate in this process, and it's the overall rider experience. It's handling, it's ergonomics, it's the way the sled positions itself when you put it into a corner, you're dragging the brake, you're tailing it out, and you come out of the corner back on the gas. And I think that at the end of the day, when it comes time to ride that sled, you know, people talk about fuel mileage and they talk about economy and things like that. When you're on the snow riding a trail, you're not thinking about that. What you're thinking about is, am I comfortable? Am I happy? Is this overworking me? Now, yes, those other things are important, but there are certain of these categories that are more important than others and it won those ones, it just did. And the, the results showed it. I mean, it did win more categories, it got better scores, so that's, that's a fact. Then it must be the sled that is providing the best overall riding experience, and that's what Snowtrax's Real World Sled of the Year is all about. There really was no bad sled here. All of them were excellent. I'd ride any one of them and be perfectly happy, and if you own one of them, be pleased with yourself because you made a great choice. But at the end of the day, there is one that stands out above all the others, and that is the Polaris Switchback XCR 800. It's become a snow tracks tradition to present a special award for the latest and greatest technology that we see being injected into the sport each season. It's called the Revolutionary Advanced Design or RAD Award. Well, for 2019, there's a ton of new stuff. How could we pick anything that's not had a season under its belt to be proven? We ensure the technology we pick has a full season's use and is proven to be totally revolutionary. And for the 2018 season, we had no arguments about what would be picked. Skidoo's shot system has brought a whole new level of high-tech integration to the table for riders who desire electric start, but don't wanna pay the weight penalty. Two pounds instead of 20 to be precise. 
Utilizing an advanced quick charge capacitor, the engineering team at Skidoo was able to ditch the traditional heavy battery, and when linking the capacitor with a unique magneto that's now also running double duty as an electric motor, you can spin up the engine. No traditional starter motor, no additional battery, and a simple one rope start once a day. That's it. We see this system as the ultimate, not just for mountain riders, but also for off-trail riders, and we hope in the near future, trail riders as well. With Skidoo introducing SHOT to the backcountry in 2019, you can be sure there'll be more SHOT integration in the future. And it's for all of these reasons that we award Skidoo's SHOT system with the well-deserved 2018 Snowtrax TV Rad Award. Closed captioning of snow tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, built for adventure. The XCR moniker has carried around some pretty big brass with it in the past. And for 2018, can the 600 class really stand up to that kind of pressure and carry the weight? The 800 XCR has been nothing short of incredible in the switchback platform. On our side of the fence, it's as popular as can be and delivers everything you could ask from a premium level sled that carries the XCR badge but as expected, the 800cc sticker as well. So does the 600 Liberty really have the brass? And when you stick it in a short track, 120 inch, unconventional shock out of skid design, does it really have what it takes? And at the end of the day, am I gonna quit asking all of these dramatic questions? Yes, I am. And yes, the XCR 600 does have the chops. So let's talk about the obvious. This being the first time for the XCR and the Axis platform to bear the 600 name and we're all very pleased with the delivery of power and the performance from the Cleanfire 600. Now keep in mind this engine is not new to the class, but it's definitely a strong contender, and you can be sure that others are noticing as Articat brought out its answer, the 600 C-Tech 2, and now Skidoo's rebuttal, the E-Tech 600R. You'll have to wait till next season to see a 600 class shootout, but for right now the 600 Cleanfire is not any slouch, and there's definitely no new tech motor that's completely slammed the door in its face. You'll talk to a lot of folks who love the way the 600 Liberty spools up, and I can't disagree because it hits like a ton of bricks and it builds steam like only an 800 class engine should. The lighter engine internals allow this motor to spool quicker, and the overall lighter weight of the engine package over an 800 makes the sled feel much more nimble. I've been surprised recently with the number of guys I talk to who won't give up their 600 Polaris for the 800, and I don't blame them. If you don't need big top end miles per hour, there's really no drawbacks at all. So it's got the power that a cross-country racer or XCR must have. But what about the rush? What do we think about this unconventional out-of-skid shock design still? In the extended switchback length, we think it's pretty incredible, and that's why it won the softy for this year. It keeps everyone who throws a leg over it happy. Now when you chop a few inches off and go with the rush size length, do you sacrifice some compliance? Yeah, you do, but hey, we all know the 120s aren't the smoothest riding rear skids in the biz, and it's probably the reason why the entire industry seems to be going in the direction of 129 as the new short tracks. The rush skid and overstructure, it's not bad, so don't read me that way. It's just that there's some fine adjustments that need to be made for it to work the best that it can. If you could jump on the 2019 Indy 129, you'd understand what I'm saying because you get a better range of compliance with very minimal input to the spring or shock settings as factory delivered. Sure, rider weight plays a role, but not as importantly as on the rush. If you don't take the time to set up your spring preload and compression, you won't be happy. If you take 20 minutes and play around, well, I think you probably think that this sled is the right fit for you. Corner to corner, I don't actually know if I can rail a sled harder than the 600 XCR Rush. And I have tried, <laughs> oh, I've tried. I mean, the ability to back this thing into a corner, feather the brake and get it to break loose and then use the laser precision of the IFS to target your exit point, yeah, that's something only a 120 inch sled can do like this. When you grab a mitt full of momentum, there's no shortage of go on tap, and you wonder if maybe they got the graphics wrong. You'd swear this thing's an eight. And back to the front end, I don't care what your opinion is, and this is coming from a guy who bled yellow for almost 13 years of my snowcross career, the IFS on this sled is flawless. I mean, rail this sled as hard as you want, and you won't overdrive the front end. It doesn't do weird stuff or snap the bars out of your hands, even when you see a frozen landmine on the trail and cringe with the fear of what's to come when you make a direct hit, yep, nothing scary, just confidence. I don't spend as much time on trail as I do off, but when I do spend time on trail, I want a sled to deliver everything that I ask of it, and the XCR package gives me all of that. 
From premium Walker Evans piggybacks on all four mounts featuring so many clicks of high and low speed compression, you're not gonna know what to do. You need to set this thing up. Don't just crank it, tune it. The handlebar positioning is spot on and while the wind coverage is, well, a little lacking, this is the stuff this class is made of and matches the competition. Plus, you can always spec it with a big windshield at Snowcheck if you want. The digital GPS gauge and LED headlight is something I think that should be on every sled and I can't believe the competition hasn't caught on. And while the seat is very comfortable and easy to move around on for aggressive riding, it's not the best in the business, but it ain't the worst either. I typically don't gravitate to the 600 class when I'm riding off trail, but when I'm riding fresh groomed on the flat top, I think Luke and Mark are gonna find that they're gonna have to put up a pretty dang good fight if they're gonna wanna wrestle this 600 rush away from me. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris. See endless possibilities. MBRP Performance Exhaust. Race Inspired. Trail Proven. And by Arctic Cat. Share our passion.